Typography matters. We depend on it not only for communication, but to also bring us together. And everything from the height and width of letters to the actual style and characteristics affect our designs. Hey everyone, my name is Melody Nieves, and in this lesson from Envato Touch Plus, we'll learn design fundamentals by breaking down the basic anatomy of letter forms. Familiarize yourself with these terms to get a better handle on typography. Let's begin with the baseline. Now every letter sits on a baseline. This is that invisible line we'd always imagine as kids to help us write out a word. Use the baseline to anchor your letters so you know where to place them in any design. Baselines can be straight and rigid or bouncy and energetic, like this sweetheart font for more appeal. Now at the root of most letters is the stem. This is that single vertical stroke you draw upwards as you create a letter like L or F. Connect one stem to another using a crossbar detail like the letter H. Next up are the ascender and descender strokes. Just like you would descend down a cliff or mountain, there are letters with downward strokes that extend past the baseline. The letter Y is a good example of this because this little area below the main V shape extends past that invisible line. This is what we call a descender stroke. Alternatively, if the stroke moves upward and away from the main body of the letter, we call that the ascender stroke. If you write a lowercase letter at the start of your sentences, it will most likely stick out as upper and lowercase letters usually have a way of setting the mood to your message. Though we often refer to them as capital letters, uppercase letter forms are just a taller, more grown-up version of lowercase letters. Use them for proper nouns like names and places, or make a bold impact with all caps for headers and titles. So earlier, when we spoke about the ascender and descender strokes, we talked about the main body of the letter. This body, specifically in reference to lowercase letters, is known as the X height. Now the X height will change depending on the font style you choose. Script fonts, for instance, like many calligraphy styles, usually have a smaller X height to help each letter flow into the next as you write. You can make learning these terms even easier by realizing that many of them are inspired by our very own bodies. At the top of the body is the head, so we'll symbolize this with the letter O, since it features the counter detail. Counters are the bits of fully or partially closed spaces found in letters like O, A, and B. If the letter isn't fully closed but still has an opening, then it's considered an open counter. Pretty simple, right? Spines keep our bodies aligned, like the spine curve found in the letter S. A type's ear is a decorative detail that pokes out from the side, and a shoulder is a bumped curve seen in letters like M and N. There are even more accents to think about when you consider the differences between serif and sans-serif typefaces. Serif types feature extended stroke details, also known as feet but these feet are missing in sans-serif styles. And since sans means without, sans-serif translates to simply without feet. You can get lost in all the tiny details of a single letter. Continue exploring key characteristics of your favorite typefaces to build your typography skills over time. Stay tuned for more helpful lessons from all of us at Envato Touch Plus.